Hey, Dan, it's always great as always to see you. And, um, you know, Alabama, Texas coming up, two of the most premier programs in college football. And, you know, Alabama, big favorites. Um, but when you were playing for Texas, you lined up against Nebraska in the 1996 Big 12 championship game, Nebraska, huge favorites. And um, they were back-to-back -back national champions and hadn't lost that year yet. You guys came in at seven and four, um, but you guys still ended up winning that game. What does it take a, a huge underdog to beat a, you know, a powerhouse team like Alabama or Nebraska? Well, one advantage Texas has is they're at home. Uh, that, that Big 12 championship game was technically a neutral site, although it was in St. Louis, Missouri, and Nebraska traveled really well. They had bought their tickets to that game as soon as the game was announced earlier in the year, and not one Texas fan had bought tickets until we made it to the game. <laughs> so uh, we were definitely uh, the visitors in that situation. But being at home is a big help. Um, it's just easier to function, communicate, do the things you need to do. Uh, that's where the, the crowd and the, the crowd noise uh, affects the visiting team is just trying to get a playoff and, and function and communicate. And it, it is difficult. So that's the one thing. The other thing about it is just, you know, I, I, I want to say it was um, the coach of the 1980 U.S. Olympic team. I can't think of his name. Herb Brooks. Herb, Herb Brooks. He said something along the lines of nine to ten times they're going to beat us, but we just need that one time. And, and that's about right. I mean, you know, in any given Sunday or even given Saturday, it's what makes college football and pros and the playoffs so exciting. The pros is you just don't know. I mean, a turnover here, a mistake there, and all of a sudden you lose a football game. So it goes back to the saying, you know, anything can happen in the football game because it's just one game, winner take all. And, and you know, it makes it exciting. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things uh, for you guys that was huge was when you went for it on fourth and short, <laughs> late in the game, throwing a long pass that nobody expected. Um, James Brown completing that pass what do you what do you remember about that play and the play call because that was really risky uh, oh yeah game. it was it was thrown to Derek Lewis who caught it and went down about the two or three yard line um you know I think it was fourth and inches right and we were down in our end maybe in the 40 35 some in that area and I not much time left but enough time for Nebraska to score and win the game uh we were actually leading at the time and we, we, you know, hey, let's go for it. You know, we're, we're the underdog, got nothing to lose. Let's just put this game away with a first down pretty much. And they call, we're in the huddle, and James comes in there and calls that, you know, whatever, roll pass left, whatever it's called. And I'm like, are you kidding me? We're throwing the football. Run the day. We'd run all over him that day. Priest Holmes had a hell of a day. Like, we're run the football. That shows you what I know, right? We did. We ran that roll pass, and Derek was wide open because the middle backer stepped up for the run, and he caught it. And you could see him as he's running down the sideline. He's watching the video of this on the, the at the top of the stadium. He sees the Nebraska guy about to catch, and you can see him wrap it up and go down. He's like, "I'm not fumbling this football." <laughs> and we actually scored on the next play, and that was the game. And that was the game, and that was a that was a big upset. And um, what do you think Texas's game plan uh, would have to be to upset Alabama this week? Oh, I, I don't think, you, you know, people are going to sit here all week and dissect, you know, well, we match up great with their linebackers or our corners or did real well against third. This is a second game of the year for both teams. A lot of this is going to be based on what they did last year. Well, that's not even the same team. It's a different team this year. And we're basing it off of, we played Louisiana Monroe, and, and I, I don't even know who Alabama played. Um, it, it's it's not a real judge of either team. We're going to find out Saturday, but that's the thing. We just don't know, in my opinion, with either team. So what's it take to beat a team like Alabama is you got to believe you can beat them. you got to deep down believe it because if you don't, the first time they punch you in the mouth and do something, you're going to sit there and say, all right, man, we're supposed to lose. Here we go. 
versus no matter what happens, no matter what goes on, I truly believe we're going to win this game. And kind of going back to that Nebraska-Texas game, James Brown famously said before that game that, you know, I think we're going to win by 21. Well, he got in a lot of trouble because that was considered bulletin board material because we were 21-point underdogs. And McAfee told James, you got to go talk to the team about what you said. And James walked in that locker room and said, I said, I think we're going to win by 21 because I think we're going to win by 21. You know, and that's what we <laughs> needed. We all jumped up and said, hell yeah, we are. You know, that was like <laughs> – that belief, you know, and, and James, we knew he didn't say unless he believed it. So you got to you got to believe you can do it. And that's kind of hard to do if you haven't done it before. But you got guys out there that are very talented. You got young guys, new guys, you know, a big play, something going your way early. And you start to say you start to build that belief. So, I mean, it, it's going to be a tough game. A lot of things got to go your way. You can't make very many mistakes in a game like this, uh, but it can certainly happen. You, you know, you and I, we we talk when we talk a lot. We we like to talk about leadership and and team culture. Um, how much of that culture and leadership uh, is there already in place at the beginning of the season, and how much can be built up and defined in a game like this, either positively or negatively? Well, you know, a game like this, all games, but big games are more magnified. Is You talk about games like this is where the playmakers step up, right? Guys on that team, both offense and defense, have to make plays. You need a turnover. You need a big completion on third and three. I watched the LSU Florida State game uh, Saturday night, which I'm sure a lot of the people watching did as well. And Florida State had a playmaker that blocked a kick at the end of the game to finish the damn game, right? You find out who those guys are in these type of games, and you need those guys to win these type of games. But to your point, I, I don't want to you know gloss over the culture side of it. I thought it was very interesting if you look at this Texas football team you know, Sarkeesian and Bijan Robinson, the two I heard mention it, but I'm sure others have spoke about it, how there was just simply some bad guys on the team last year, and they needed to go, and they're not here now, and the, the culture and the attitude's different, and that's what gets me most excited about this season. You can talk all you want about rookies or freshmen and all this other junk. When you start talking about there's a change in culture, because we who look at those things know that that's been a problem with Texas, now I start to believe that maybe this thing's headed in the right direction. 